Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. On behalf of Center for Sustainable Development of Muslim World, United Kingdom, I welcome all of you in today's international webinar. And the title we have chosen for today's webinar is The Principles of Muhammad, Peace Be Upon Him, in Environmental Protection. Respected audience, we have learned from the historians that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was born in Mecca in the month of Rabiul Awal on Monday. So today is the 15th of Rabiul Awal. That is one perspective. Another one is the 26th UN Climate Change Conference on the parties that is called COP26, that is scheduled to be happening in Glasgow on 21st October to 12th of November 2021. And the main purpose of this seminar is more than 190 world leaders are expected to arrive in Scotland. And the purpose is together with tens of thousands of negotiators, government representatives, businesses, and citizens for 12 days of talk and more experts believe COP26 has a particular urgency. So from these two perspectives, we have chosen the title of today's webinar, and that is the principles of Prophet Muhammad in environmental protection. Respected audience, although the word environment has not been mentioned explicitly in the Quran or the Sunnah, but if we take the meaning of the environment as the earth and everything surrounding it, then we will find that this concept is mentioned 199 times in the Holy Quran. Moreover, Islam considers all aspects related to sustainability. The basic tenets of Islam are based on a comprehensive and insightful view that forces people to conserve and respect the environment. In Islam, the environment is a broader concept. It includes climate and its components, plants, animals, sand, human beings, and all things found on the ground or in the atmosphere. The concept of the environment in Islam is a comprehensive concept that includes earth, sky, and mountains with all creatures in addition to human and their motivations, emotions, and instincts. All these creatures were created to survive the people. Therefore, the people are responsible for maintaining and conserving the environment. Islam forbids wasting of resources and destroying the environment. The Prophet, peace be upon him, ordered the Muslims not to cut trees during the war even. He emphasized the conservation of the environment and the prevention and protection of its destruction. Therefore, conserving the environment is a religious duty for every Muslim as well. Considering this issue, we have chosen today the topic, and we will have with us as the chair, Dr. Aishat Muniza. She is an associate professor, INCEIF Malaysia, and she was also the former deputy minister, Ministry of Finance and Treasury, Republic of Maldives. So we, we welcome our honorable chair in today's webinar. Respected audience, we will have with us as the guests of honor, Professor Dr. Muhammad Ruhul Amin from USA, Professor Dr. Nokshot Amin from Malaysia, and as the discussions, we hope we will have with us Dr. Abida Malik from United Kingdom, Dr. Rafiqul Islam from Australia, Dr. Irfan Sayuki Beg from Indonesia, Dr. Yusuf Ding from Turkey, Dr. Salman Ahmed Sheikh from Pakistan, he already joined with us, and uh, Khaled Saifullah from United Kingdom. So at the beginning of this webinar, I welcome all of our honorable guests in today's webinar. So at the beginning, we will be listening from uh, Khaled Saifullah. He's a doctoral researcher on climate finance at Glasgow Caledonian University, United Kingdom. So I request Khaled Saifullah to begin his speech. A very good morning from my part. Um, and thank you so much for the opportunity. And I also uh, congratulate the organization to uh, arrange this webinar in such timely manner. Um, let me just uh, share some reflection from my end. Uh, probably my share is, um, uh, I mean, the slides are shared. Probably yes. Time. Thank you so much. So as uh, our host was describing in, in this morning, this, this is the month of Rabiul Awal, uh, the month to reflect more on the seerah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
this is not specifically uh, uh, a ritual that we will only reflect on this month, but this is to reflect more or ponder more and send more salawat and salam and reflect more um, on the on the lifestyle and, and uh, seerah of our beloved prophet. Uh, however, as also um, brother Yahya was saying that uh, in, in, in this just coming week, the COP26 event is knocking at the, at the door and there, there can't be a better combination and time to reflect the principles of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the environmental protection and to articulate those lessons and to understand that how faith and faith-based organizations can play their appropriate role. So in the background, this we, 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 everyone of us, we are very much aware of the biggest problems around us, um, what we are facing currently, including climate change. These are because of the failure to do the justice with the environment and to play our stewardship role on the earth. Uh, in, in this junction, Islam provides remedies to global environmental crisis. Uh, its development model um, argues for achieving prosperity without increasing the ecological footprints. And the principles and teachings of Prophet وسلم, in environmental protection teaches humanity to value and protect the nature. And Islam views the role of us individual as a value creator and as a reformer on this planet. So in this slide, I have just summarized the worldview that defines, uh, and we, we can get it from the perspective of Islam. Islam defines our life uh, as, uh, if you consider it as a good life or hayat al tayyibah, it absolutely uh, leads you to the understanding of uh, the lifestyle that Prophet Sallallahu led and he showed us. That is not an extravagant life, that is a life lightly lived on the earth, which is so it, as well as caring for both people and nature together while leading the life. And the holistic view of Islam founded uh, on the notion of, of the harmony between these people and nature. And there are some natural state or balance settled. So there are some fitra and mizan settled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us to maintain that balance and liqdar, that proportion in, in this universal system. So Islamic theology that doesn't recognize human as independent of surrounding environment. And this is also a reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala signs, ayat of Allah, and the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala around us always. So humans attitude towards environment should be based on the principle of compassion, which is rahmah. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he himself was sent to the earth. He, he was sent on the earth as a rahmah to all beings and to demonstrate us that how to do that in, in action, in practical life. So in this slide, I've tried to just uh, ponder upon a few principles. This is not encompassing all. There are some other hadith and lessons. Uh, but just as a starting or kickoff of today's webinar. So the first one we can see that this is a hadith uh, process narrated. The world is sweet and verdant, and verily Allah has made you steward in it, and he sees how you acquit yourselves. So it leads us to the principle of stewardship, and the reflection from here is uh, we have really severely failed to maintain that balance and show our responsibility as, as a steward or guardian of the arts. And, here, basically, we have changed the status of a stewardship or a trusteeship to the ownership. We have started to own the earth and use it as, 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 our, um, as our maximum need, or not regarding the need of the upcoming generation or, or the people who are um, suffering out of it. So we have to rebuild the concept and to, to, in, in order to improve the condition of the earth. The second lesson we can derive is, is basically most 
well-known uh, hadith of Prophet when where uh, in an event of our duo of Saad, Prophet uh, reminded Saad not to use excess natural resources, even if it is extracting water from a flowing river or performing our duo. This leads us to the understanding of the principle of conservation and uh, the understanding of overexploitation, overconsumption, or wastefulness, which is a trough, it needs to be guarded. And we don't, uh, we not have to, we have to be careful where, where we are about to exceed the limits in consumption. It includes all biological or physical elements on the earth. And even it is for the noble core. That, that is what the hadith is about. There, even if it is for the noble cause, there could be wastefulness of the resources and process and reminded us about that. And the third principle, uh, we want to just uh, ponder upon is about the divine balance Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala settled on the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he has raised up the sky and has set a balance that you exceed not the balance. And in another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that the calamities have appeared on both land and the sea because of human deeds. So Allah may let them taste part of the consequences. Perhaps it might be the global warming and, and the climate calamities we are observing around us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ending the verse that uh, perhaps they may return. So the reflection from um, this understanding is restoring the balance in land and ocean to avoid the climate change. We, we can see that it came again and again in the different SDGs. SDG 13 talks about climate change, 14 talks about life below water, 15 talks about life on the land. So the balance that we have failed to maintain on life on the <clears> land <throat> and life below the water is uh, much need to establish now with understanding and uh, the guidance and teaching that Professor Sam left for us. So in summary, I will very quickly go to the end and allow our other discussions to focus on. Uh, here are just some gist what we can carry forward as an action plan. Uh, we have to focus on justice, sustainability and harmony between human and nature. We need to have a shift from the general form of environmentalism, just green leveling everything from there to an understanding of transform, transformative Islamic ecology. And we need to have a, what you call global understanding of the Islamic countries uh, to come forward and join the force and active involvement in all kinds of climate actions, whether it is mitigation, adaptation, or loss and damage efforts. And from the perspective of economy, uh, we need to uh, promote in, in a wider scale, we need to promote the circular economy to a wider scale to avoid wastefulness, which is very much prevalent in, in the West, but uh, it needs to be uh, also equally uh, echoed in the Islamic communities and the countries. And from the finance perspective, investors um, advocacy for green or ESD or socially responsible investment, it needs to be uh, there. And also greening religion, this is also important, activism by the religious leaders in teaching both spiritual dimension and scientific knowledge on environmental restoration. And finally, reformulating the fiqh or Islamic legal tradition to take ecological dimensions seriously. Here are some global efforts that is uh, happening around us. Uh, UN has some effort which is titled as Faith for Art Initiative and they have COVID and so on. Uh, titled as Al-Mizan, they, they, they did it uh, very recently in 2020. And there are some other global efforts going on. Uh, some Islamic countries, they came together to come up with Islamic declaration on global climate change, as well as uh, keeping a COP26 of Glasgow on, on mind. Yes, this month they have also uh, they have also issued a joint statement uh, how Islamic countries can come forward. Uh, this is from the 
political leaders, this is from the religious leaders and overall communities come forward and address the climate-related issues uh, together. This is my last slide, uh, and, and this is really, uh, it, it has a profound impact uh, on me when I have gone through this hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We can consider it the last minute call in Islam, uh, just like the last minute call to get on board of the plane. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if the Qiyamah, the last hour comes, when well, you have a sapling um, in your hands, and if it is possible to plant it before the hours comes, you should plant it. So it gives us an idea and understanding that sustaining or investing in nature's growth, even when it is immaterial for humankind, it is immaterial for us because I'm leaving the earth, but it is not immaterial for the generation coming. And it also gives us a sense as a Muslim to be more productive, even it is at the last hour of, of my life and to create the value on, on the earth uh, and, and to, enhance that value and to pass that value on towards our generation coming. So I will stop there. Thank you very much um, for your kind patience and allowing me to speak in this morning. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Khalid Saifullah, who has joined from United Kingdom for his wonderful incitement in today's international webinar. We can see that uh, with us uh, already, Professor Dr. Muhammad Ruhul Amin, he joined from USA. Uh, uh, we also see that uh, Dr. Rafiqul Islam, he also joined from uh, Australia and also Brother Salman Ahmed Sheikh, uh, he joined from Pakistan and Dr. Irfan Saidi Baik, uh, he also joined from Indonesia. So again, uh, I also welcome all of our guests in today's international webinar. There is another important hadith that is narrated in Bukhari where Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is none amongst the believers who plants a tree or sows a seed and then a bird or a person or an animal eats thereof, but it is regarded as having given a charitable gift for which there is great recompense. The idea of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a pioneer of environmentalism will initially strike many as a strange. Indeed, the term environment and related concepts like ecology, environmental awareness, and sustainability are modern day inventions, terms that were formulated in the face of the growing concerns about the contemporary state of the natural world around us. And yet a closer reading of the hadith, the body of work that recounts significant events in the prophet's life reveals that he was a staunch advocate of environmental protection. From all accounts of his life and deeds, we read that the prophet peace be upon him had a profound respect for fauna and flora, as well as an almost visceral connection in the four elements, art, water, fire, and air. He was a strong proponent of the sustainable use and cultivation of land and water, proper treatment of animals, plants and birds, and the equal rights of users. In this context, the modernity of Prophet's view of the environment and the concept he introduced of his followers is particularly very striking. Their audience, uh, at this point of time, I would like to request uh, who has joined from Turkey, Dr. Irfan Suyuki Beik, to deliver his speech. Uh, he's the Director of Management, Entrepreneurship and Leadership Research Center, Istanbul Sabahattin Zaim University, Turkey, Dr. Yusuf Dink. Maybe he will join a bit later. Now I would like to request uh, our another guest today, uh, Dr. Salman Ahmed Sheikh. He is the editor and project coordinator, Islamic Economics Project and Assistant Professor, SZABIST University, Karachi, Pakistan. Dr. Salman Ahmed Sheikh. Uh, thank you, Jazakallah. Uh, can I share my screen? Yes, sure. Uh, uh, did you see my screen? Yes, yes, please. All right. Mm -hmm.
Dr. Salman, we can't hear you. No. We can see the slide, but we can't hear you, unfortunately. Maybe the mic. Uh, we will come to uh, Dr. Salman Ahmed again. Uh, at this point of time, I would like to request uh, Dr. Rafiqul Islam, uh, who is an associate professor, School of Computing and Mathematics, Faculty of Business, Justice, and Behavioral Sciences, Charles Stewart University, Australia. I would like to request Dr. Rafiqul Islam to deliver his speech, please. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man hula ma ba'd. Respected host and MC of this uh, wonderful program and our honorable chair, guest of honor, and our prominent and wise speakers, and my beloved viewers and listeners. I'd like to start with universal greeting, greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. I thank the organizer to honor me for giving the opportunity to say something in this virtual gathering or webinar. Uh, at the same time, I'm very humbled to speak in front of prominent speakers around the world. And I am not expert in this area, what the topic mentions in this webinar. But I will try to say something about the reflection of the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, my uh, beloved brothers and beloved sisters, we are very fortunate and very gifted person, very blessed Ummah, as we are the Ummah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is not only the Prophet of Allah. He is our teacher, our leader, our mentor, our intercessor. He is Sirajum Munir, as mentioned in the Quran. If we are able to take him as our true role model, not only in the environment, in the whole life, in our society, then our character, our conduct, our society, our, all the systems in all spheres of life will be balanced. And all the dreams are living creatures become successful, not only this world and hereafter. My brother, uh, this topic is webinar as I mentioned the principles of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in environmental protection. So when you say environment, what is environment? Environment is surrounding or condition in which a person or all the creations, animals, plants, everything lives and operates. The environment, it actually the world in this particular, this world in this dunya encompasses all living and non-living things that are happening naturally, not artificial. But if we look at the principle of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions him, he is not only the mercy of this world, he is mercy of universal rahmatan lil alameen, as a previous speaker already mentions. Because a life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa whole seerah of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is wuswatun hasana. Laqad khayana lakum fi rasulullahi wuswatun hasana. There is no doubt. There is no doubt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that means messenger of Allah has excellent pattern model 
for this in words, Uswatun Hasana. So my uh, dear listeners, if we look at this particular phrase of the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presents his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his life as an absolute model for the Muslim to follow. Not only the Muslims, for the ummah, for the humanity. And this particular phrase of the Quran demands that Muslim or mu'min or every human being should take the life of Muhammad وسلم, as a model for themselves in every affair and mold and pattern their life, their character, their personality and society according to this model. My beloved brothers and beloved sisters, 1400 centuries has gone that Muhammad وسلم, passed away. But his message of Uswatun Hasana, the best role model is still alive. His example actually lead us from darkness to light. His sirah was, not one, was one of the mercy, compassion, care, consideration, kindness, tolerance for the all humanity all environment, all creations. And his character is uphold no one else in this planet by, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ And also Allah says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٌ عَزِيمٌ There are a lot of verse and hadith, hadith. And I'd like to mention because the topic is environment and I am not expert in this area and I definitely there are prominent speakers they will give uh, uh, explain details about the environmental prote protection in the in, in the light of the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu but I would like to mention a few points about the principles of the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu if you look at the current world uh, the environment and protection of environment is very contemporary area of research. A lot of seminars, symposiums are happening around the world. A lot of researchers are working how to protect environment and how to protect this planet. However, the encouragement for the well-being of the environment has long been mentioned and practiced by our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam more than 1400 year before. And one of the hadiths I believe uh, mentions in the previous speaker, and I will say the Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu reported, inna dunya ulwatun qadiratun wa inna allaha mustakhlifukum fiha fa yangzur kayfa ta'maloon. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, the life of the world is sweet and green. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes you generation succeeding one another so that he may try you in respect to your actions. So if you look at this hadith, one of the many lessons we can extract from this hadith in the principles, in the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how this inna dunya ulwatun khadira, that means sweet and green. So if we took these two words in your life, that will be enough to extract and to mine the meaning of this word. And I, I, I particularly, I, uh, I'd like to extract two things from here. So how Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sweet and green mentions in this planet. So one, one of the, our uh, beloved host, he already mentions, this uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa says about the planting of the tree, how to protect the environment. And we can see one of the hadiths he mentions in Bukhari, that is wonderful and amazing hadith, I, I, I would say. So I am not going this planet. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa did not only treat people well, but he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to show great justice, fairness to the animals and other creation as well. And we can find one hadith, 
there is a reward for serving any living being. This hadith comes in Bukhari as well. And one of the occasion, two companions brought two sticks from, uh, uh, from a bird's nest. The mother bird, along with her baby, uh, uh, began to beg for a release in a very sad tone. No one listened to this sad tone, but Lord Prophet Muhammad sallallahu this situation has said, why did you catch this bird? And make this mother excited. Make this mother of this bird make emotion. Leave the two kids, both children left too. Nevertheless, the Prophet sallallahu gave detailed instruction to the ummah regarding the protection of animals. He commanded kindness loveliness, provision of food and water to the animals and not to give them too much trouble. And he says that when you slaughter animal, slaughter excellently. In the Allah Kataba, Ihsana fi kulli shayin. This is Hadith. We know this. I'd like to another point in the environment we are very careful and we are very conscious about the eat. Cleanliness. Cleanliness of the environment. So there are a lot of hadith, subhanAllah, there are a lot of hadith. Uh, it, it is part of the faiths. Imatatul Aza and Tariq, you know the long hadith, Bunil uh, 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 Islam ala, uh, 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 what is called, uh, 70 branches. And one of the branches in the hadith last part says, Imatatul Aza and Tariq. That means, Removing a harmful things from the path is a part of faith. And also, and another hadith it says that if you're removing a harmful things from the path is a charitable act. SubhanAllah. And not only this, if you clean the environment, clean your uh, society, clean your surrounding, there are different hadiths. One of the hadiths he says, Rasulin Yamshi Batarik and Wajada Husna Shaukin Ala Tariq Farahu Fashaka Allahu Lahu Faralahu. Ya Salam, Ya Salam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, While a man was going to a way, he saw a thorny branch and removed it from the way that people can pass this way smoothly and peacefully. And Allah became pleased by his action and forgive him for that action. SubhanAllah. So my brothers and my sisters, we, the current world, we know that the COVID-19 impacted everyone's life. Physical isolation, lockdown have created a tremendous effect in our physical and mental well-being. The recent study, just given the recent study in March 2021, I believe, that means COVID-19 impact shows that the mental and physical well-being impacted, but the, at the same time, the world, in particular world, saves in 2020 in one month calculation, the saves record level of what is called uh, energy, energy emission due to the isolation one month records. So this COVID one side is, there are a lot of negative impact, but other, another side is, it is a gifted resources. So what I want to say that today we are very, sometimes very upset through the, through the uh, 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 turbulent time, turbulent world, world. There are a lot of unsolvable problems we are facing. The West, people speak the depression and decline the society in the East, industrial and technological progress has created a vacuum in the society, in particular, a spiritual vacuum. A lot of people are going, to, taking different spiritual uh, motivation. In, in Australia, I, I would say that there is a big religion, is no religion. So therefore, in this challenging moment, if the human being, in particular Muslim Ummah, wants to regain their glorious past, then they must follow the way of life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and make his as the best and true model for the perfect role model. 
perfect role model. His life, his dealings, his dealings with the environment, his dealings with the society, his dealings with the young, his dealings with the older, elder, his de dealings with the family, his dealings with the fellow human beings, all of us is the inspiration. So one thing uh, I conclude is that the life of this world is a test and trial. COVID-19 is given a lot of lessons, but it is okay to scare. It is okay to cry, but giving up should not be an option. We human beings always expect our life should go as per our plan in a perfect way. We want everything perfect, but nothing is perfect in this world. We all are perfectly imperfect. And that is perfectly all right. We don't have to be perfect just because other people wants to be perfect, want us to be perfect. There are so many people in this world who are dreaming to live a life that we are living now. So my brothers and sisters, let us teach ourselves, our children, our family, our next generation, the life of the seerah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and use it in our daily life so that we may improve ourselves. We may improve our society, our surrounding and become a better human being. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sent us as a human and we need to try to be human. That is the challenge for all of us. Let us be more vigilant and show compassion to all creations and respect each other. Irrespective of their race, religion, their ethnicity, let us start our new journey with the journey of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let us emulate the model of Muhammad Sallallahu in my life, in my family life, in my society, so that we can protect this environment, we can enlighten the society in the same way our history tells us. I would like to conclude with saying that the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is my role model and he has touched my heart like no other personality or hero in this world, that's my heart. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is my source of inspiration for my connection to the human being and for my connection to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to shower his blessings upon the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his companions, all those that follow him till the day of judgment. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to include us among those who love the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more than anyone and anything else in this world. And may Allah give us the ability to perfectly emulate the guidance of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum bastaghfiruh. Innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Thank you very much, Dr. Rafiqul Islam, for his very beautiful deliberation, who has joined from Australia. Uh, he has mentioned some very important topics in today's deliberation, and he also mentioned that environmental awareness and protection of natural resources is an integral part of Islamic beliefs. Therefore, destroying the environment is encroaching on the rights of future generations. He also mentioned that the environment must be maintained as it was found. And people should consider the future of the next generation at the same time, which also have the right to benefit from the environment. According to Islamic thought that he mentioned properly, that benefits from the environment should not be limited to some people. Instead, it should be the source of life for all people at all times. So thank you very much, Dr. Rafiq Islam, once again for his very beautiful deliberation, who joined from Australia today. Uh, we can see that uh, Dr. Naushad Amin, uh, who has joined from Malaysia today, uh, we, uh, we welcome him in our today's webinar. A respected audience, at this point of time, I would like to request uh, Dr. Yusuf Dink, who joined from Turkey. He is uh, the Director of Management, Entrepreneurship and Leadership Research Center, Istanbul Sabah Hatim Zaim University, Turkey. I welcome Dr. Yusuf Dink to deliver his speech now, please. Thank you, Brother Hadid. Uh, good to be together again uh, at this, uh, let's say, Holy Week. This is the Mevlid 
Nebevi. And uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, it is a good opportunity to share our thought on those issues. And uh, greetings from Istanbul to all participants and the audiences again. Uh, brother, I have a presentation. Let us present, yes, uh, share the screen. I want to share new perspectives with you. I want to discuss what Anatolian people understand from Prophet's hadith. So uh, I will make a, dis a discussion on um, architectural uh, paradigm of uh, uh, Anatolia. Uh, I mean, uh, current Turkish geography, Turkey's geography. So they created a campus, like a solidarity campus. I want to give some hints and uh, uh, I want you to know how we can uh, practice uh, Islam, Quran and Hadith in our uh, present life. So that I will present a, uh, an art architecture design. That house belongs to my grandfather. I lived there for a while and this house is, uh, uh, has some specific uh, features. I want to present them to you today. So I guess we can catch some, uh, some hints what uh, our prophet was ad advising, our beloved prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was advising and what Quran is teaching to us. So uh, I gave a topic, uh, the title uh, for the presentation, Ash or Trash, a Zero Waste Lifestyle from Anatolia. Uh, that is prepared by me, this uh, study, uh, uh, prepared by me and Fatih, our student. He's from Art Architecture Faculty. So he's an architecture. Uh, he will be at, uh, at least in the next year, inshallah, after graduation. So the outline of my presentation is based on an analysis of Hadith and a description of Anatolian village house and the zero waste lifestyle and I will conclude, inshallah. So there are those hadiths. I guess uh, our participants, the other discussants, will uh, will share with you. But I, I wanted to highlight some of them. Uh, those are very impressive. And I want to uh, tell you a real life uh, story. For example, the one. If the final hour comes, while you have a shoot of a plan in your hands, you should definitely plant it. Uh, last week we had a meeting with a, with a sister converted to Islam. She was one of the most famous ballet dancers from Switzerland. And she said that after uh, learn about that hadith, how impressive it is, she cried for hours. So those are th that strong uh, hadith. And I want. I really want to share about more about her uh, experience, but maybe next time or maybe some other time. So, uh, what we we understood or what Anatolian Turkish people understood from those hadiths and uh, Quran, I want to describe that one. So, there those make a parad uh, paradigmal difference. Uh, th that word is focused on human rights, you know. And what we need to do, we need to change it. We need to shift to public right. Haqqul abd. So public, all, uh, haq of all creatures. When we consider, when we split haq rights into segments like human rights, animal rights, some other rights, then it brings a conflict. And we, we suffer from that in, uh, in the sense of uh, environment in the sense of other problems. So if we consider all rights as a holistic perspective, from a holistic perspective, then we will solve more problems, I guess. And that can be uh, presented, how it can be practiced through uh, uh, an architectural design. Let me show you about this. So this is a modern, modern life uh, hometown uh, or modern life, uh, modern life village. Uh, scene and this is the uh, dumping uh, ground. You see, all all the trash is modernism, right? All the garbage is modernism. That come that came to us with modernism, but what we had before. 
we had a solidarity campus, a system consists human indifference and the architecture material itself. So it includes the extended family, grandparents, parents, and kids, horses, donkeys, sheep, cows, uh, chickens, and dogs. And if, if needed, there are the others. So those, uh, those uh, um, how to say, those uh, members of, of the house uh, cooperate or collaborate each other for their survival. Since the uh, Darwinist theory based on the competition is uh, not accepted anymore in the uh, main stream science, uh, there is an opportunity to discuss uh, it. Uh, it brought an opportunity to discuss Islamic economics, Islamic uh, perspective of of life. So, uh, what what uh, I will explain is how we can solidarate instead of compete each other with uh, with all family members and with the other uh, creatures. So this is the house, uh, a two floor. And this is a, uh, the top floor is the main living area and the ground floor is uh, uh, like hardware and the campus includes animals. Let, uh, we designed this, uh, we created this 3D, uh, uh, 3D uh, paintings or drawings. Uh, I want to show from any, any angel. So without those animals, people didn't uh, create a place for live. How they cooperate, how they solidarate, I will try to explain, but I want to show, uh, show you from every angel. So how it works, please keep in mind the, uh, the, the, the design, the, uh, the concept, how it works. First, no one is cooked more than little portions. So we, we were sure that after lunch or after dinner, there will, there would be no waste. Sometimes that, ha that can happen if there is a, a plain mistake. Sometimes that can happen, but it is not problem even. What is produced as waste just at the, uh, happens at the production stage. So these uh, hard shells, vegetable, uh, fruit peels, other unused parts of the ingredients. So those are the main ways at that time. And we shouldn't consider them as garbage. Those were food for cows, sheep, and donkeys and horses. So nothing is wasted for now. Bones and other, other that, uh, that is good for dogs was going to them also. So those were not waste as well. And if there was some uh, unconsumed food, uh, dogs were uh, consuming it also. So they, they were not waste as well. And what was left is the crumbs from the bread. And th those go was going to chickens. They were eating that. So the whole system never created any waste. And the, uh, from the human and the animal, they never created waste. They were providing milk, meat, any uh, animal protein, uh, protection, and they were uh, helping human to, to be more comfortable, to be more secure, to uh, both from the risk and the, uh, and the uh, uh, from the social uh, perspective. And their waste, Actually, it, it was fertilizer or fuel or agriculture medicine or leather products. And there was no, there were nothing wasted. I will explain a bit more. Yeah, of Dr. Course, Yusuf there, Ding, just three more minutes, please. Okay. okay. Of course, there is a lot of details, but uh, what is uh, the house itself was made from mud and the, even the roof is was uh, filled with soil. And the, the family was producing parsley and this kind of salad uh, ingredients. And the rest from that system was the ash. So at that time in Anatolian village, there were no trash, but ash dumping grounds. 
and age is a bet for chicken. The whole system was was hundred percent in peace with each other. And I, what I want to say, what we can understand from Quran and Atit is we need to create a solidarity system with human and animal and the environment. And that system is not uh, uh, is the only way to, to sustain zero waste and sustainability. Zero waste is not a cycling issue, but it's a lifestyle. That's what I want to say. And thank you very much. And the believers who are to the trust and the promises attentive. We, we, should, uh, we should be loyal to Allah, to family, to people, to environment and pledge would help us achieve the pleasure of Allah, inshallah. Thank you very much uh, for giving time to me. It was a pleasure to me uh, to be together with you today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Yusuf Ding, uh, for his uh, wonderful uh, presentation he has shown to us. And if we have more time, then we could gain uh, more benefit from his uh, elaboration. So thank you very much once again, Dr. Yusuf Ding, and hopefully we will invite him again in, in our another future uh, events. I respect the audience at this point of time. I would like to request uh, our another uh, uh, guest, uh, uh, Dr. Irfan uh, Soyuki Beik. Uh, he is a commissioner in Indonesia Work Forward. And at the same time, he is an associate professor, Islamic Economics, IEPB University, all through Indonesia. So I would like to request Dr. Irfan Soyuki Beik to deliver his speech, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Khalid. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good afternoon yeah, from Indonesia. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of his mercy we can gather here. And also I'd like to thank the organizer uh, for inviting me to share our humble experience in the implementation of Islamic Green Finance programs in Indonesia. I think we have heard that uh, about the uh, uh, environmental protection principles yeah, uh, from previous uh, distinguished speakers. So uh, in this uh, moment, I would like to share about how it is implemented in the case of the Islamic economics and finance in Indonesia. Uh, as we all know that environmental protection, uh, it should be automatically embedded in the Islamic financial program as this uh, environmental protection is part of the Islamic teaching. And uh, we have uh, seen in many ayah and also uh, many hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in which uh, Islam has given strong emphasis on the importance of protecting environment and also in ensuring uh, sustainability of the environment. Uh, and of course, uh, this teaching should be implemented and reflected in the practice of uh, economic activities. And uh, from the, this uh, practical point of view that there are a number of the products uh, that are related with the Islamic uh, financial operation that are green in nature, such as the issuance of green, suku, uh, green stock and green Islamic social finance program comprising zakat and wakaf. So I'd like to give you uh, some example on how uh, these environmental issues are, uh, ma uh, are managed in the case of uh, Indonesia. Uh, the first one, uh, if you look at the Islamic banking industry in Indonesia, uh, uh, a study that is made by Indriani et al, uh, that was published in 2018, uh, has shown that uh, our environmental risk index, if we look at the mean value, shows an increasing trend from the period of 2014 until 2017. This means that uh, <clears throat> Islamic banking practices in Indonesia, in Indonesia have paid greater attention towards the environmental issue. And uh, the practice of this the green Islamic banking financing uh, has been implemented uh, and uh, the proportion of it is becoming greater and greater. So it means that the Islamic banking industry in the country has given us uh, a good performance in uh, trying to include 
the environmental analysis in its own uh, operational uh, uh, practices. So uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, becoming evidence that Islamic banking practices is now more environmental friendly. Another important example in the case of Indonesia is on the issuance of sovereign green sukuk, yeah, which was uh, issued uh, for the first time uh, three years ago in 2018. At that time, uh, the government of Indonesia issued the global sovereign suku, yeah, the first global uh, so sovereign green suku uh, issued by the government of Indonesia. Uh, the <clears throat> the amount yeah, of, of that uh, green suku uh, was around 1.25 billion US dollar uh, with the yield uh, per annum is equal to 3.75%. Yeah, and the, uh, for the period of five years. And then uh, it was followed in the uh, 2019, yeah, the second issuance of sovereign green suku. Uh, which was around uh, 750 million uh, US dollar. And then the third issuance was in last year in 2020. Uh, our government was also issuing another 700 million for green suku. So uh, what is the what was the fund, the usage of fund uh, uh, collected from this suku issuance? If you look at uh, the uh, figure, the right figure, we can see that uh, the fund uh, that was uh, collected from the issuance of sovereign green sukuk was used for various projects uh, that are related with the, the renewable energy project, sustainable transportation project, green tourism, energy efficiency, and then uh, resilience to climate change uh, project. Uh, and then uh, the project that that is related with the uh, reduction of waste to energy and uh, waste management, and also uh, sustainable agriculture. Yeah. So these funds are channeled to uh, green project. Yeah. So this is just another example on how the tension towards the environmental issue become very important. Another example is on. Uh, Islamic uh, social finance program. Yeah, let me give you just some example. For example, uh, we have uh, zakat-based community development in every city in Indonesia, uh, and this program basically is green in nature. Yeah, because uh, it covers all aspects, including environmental protection. Similarly, in the food granary program, yeah, we try to empower. Uh, the uh, poor farmer, yeah, uh, to empower them, yeah, by improving their capacity and quality uh, through the sustainable agriculture approach that includes increasing uh, farm yields and also decreasing environmental damage. So this is another example on how zakat uh, can play important role uh, in creating better environmental uh, condition. Similarly, we have also developed in various cities in the country about the zakat and waqf based organic rice farm and also the last uh, the last <clears throat> example that i would like to share with you is on the development of waqf based forest so we have now five uh, areas of waqf based forest yes you can see here uh, we have in uh, aceh yeah in, in in east java in surabaya in West Jaffa province in Bandung, yeah, and also in the uh, central Jaffa and the West Jaffa uh, here in Bogor, yeah, near to my campus. So we develop wakaf based forests, yeah. So what we do with this wakaf based forest, yeah, we uh, combine uh, the program uh, that uh, include a combination of a social humanity program, uh, ecology program, economic program, education and dawah, and also research. Yeah, so how we, at the same time, we can balance the ecological aspect, but uh, we can also empower the economic potential uh, from the wakaf. So what we do, uh, 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 for example, in one of the wakaf uh, forest program, yeah, uh, we develop the bee farmer, yeah, bee farming activities. Yeah, bee, uh, we call it trigona. Yeah, it is a special bee that 
that is living in the forest area yeah, with certain uh, degree of temperature yeah, and uh, they can be economically you know, managed so that it will give economic benefit yeah, to the uh, people or to the community living in the surrounding area of this uh, Waka forest. And at the same time, we can ensure that ecological balance can be uh, maintained so that uh, by combining these aspects, the Wakaf uh, forest programs ensure that uh, we can have a good impact, uh, not only to the environmental condition, but also to the economic condition. So uh, these are some examples on how uh, the environmental protection issues are implemented in the case of Islamic economic development in Indonesia. By that, I end my presentation. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Irfan Soyuki Beki, for his very beautiful, so precise, and in a short time uh, to deliver before us. And you have mentioned some very important uh, aspects and also uh, some example from Indonesian perspective. So once again, I thank uh, our honorable guest, Dr. Irfan Suyoki Bey. Respect the audience, we are waiting. Uh, we have been waiting for uh, listening from our guest of honors, uh, Professor Dr. Mohammad Ruhul Amin and Professor Dr. Naushad Amin. Before that, uh, we would like to request uh, Dr. Salman Ahmed Sheikh, uh, the editor and project coordinator, Islamic Economics Project, and an assistant professor, SZABIST University, Karachi, Pakistan. Uh, I would like to request Dr. Salman Ahmed Sheikh to uh, complete his presentation. All right, uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, please. All right, let me share the screen so that uh, I can focus my talk. Yes, perfect. All right. Uh, thank you to the organizers for inviting me. Uh, due to the shortage of time, I would uh, briefly talk about uh, these aspects. Uh, environmental crisis, as we know, is uh, is uh, is a challenge that we are facing. Uh, and uh, because of COVID-19, we are seeing that some of the progress that we made on SDGs, it has got uh, uh, reversed. And then uh, I would uh, talk a little bit more, uh, you could say, uh, uh, in a deep way about limitations of neoclassical economics to integrate ethics and due to which we need uh, uh, Islamic environmental ethics uh, which can provide us uh, solutions and we have also heard about the financial solutions uh, in Islamic social finance from Professor uh, Irfan. We have also uh, looked at uh, what are the environmental ethics that we find in the Quran and Hadith from uh, Professor Rafiqul and also from Brother Sefullah. Uh, so let me start with what are the environmental challenges that we are facing. We know that we are having unprecedented burning of fossil fuels, rapid deforestation, contamination of seas, and this has resulted in rise in temperature, frequent heat waves, floods, melting of glaciers, and all these problems are there which we are facing. Now, if you look at the COVID-19 situation and the and the resulting challenges from the COVID-19 related to uh, sustainable development, we see that there is increased poverty, which has reversed the gains that we have made on SDG 1, which is to reduce poverty. There is rise in hunger, there is rise in deaths uh, related to COVID and also related to other diseases because the resources that we have now uh, are being uh, uh, mobilized and allocated on different uh, types of challenges and not just uh, on particular health uh, challenges that we were facing before COVID-19. There is um, a schooling problem for children, increased uh, unemployment, especially in the informal sector. There is decline in industrial growth in a lot of developing countries. Large corporations have survived, but micro enterprises, small enterprises, medium enterprises have really suffered. And uh, we are also seeing that um, the, the wastage and the use of um, uh, finite resources is also uh, intensified due to uh, COVID-19. There is more use of packing material, more nuclear travel, and law and order situation has also deteriorated. Now, if we look at the neoclassical economics uh, theory as well as the solutions toolbox, we find that it is quite shallow. Uh, neoclassical economics uh, is a discipline devoid of uh, values and ethics. It is unable to integrate ethics into the economic behavior. There is over-reliance on Pareto efficiency when the uh, policy making is deliberated upon uh, an efficient but highly unequal allocation is considered Pareto optimal. But uh, if there is a Pareto improvement outcome, 
which is more egalitarian but not uh, efficient it would be considered as suboptimal we know that there is a high concentration of uh, resources the resources are mobilized and uh, uh, used for uh, inessential needs like there are some movies some video games they have uh, budgets which uh, exceed the uh, planning and development budget of several uh, countries in africa and in the poorer uh, regions of the world if you look at neoclassical economics it is neutral between ends if uh, there is a good commercial business um, uh, to make uh, golf courses to make resorts then uh, these projects are going to be carried out and if there is sanitation problem health problem educational problem this would be underfunded in a market economy there is exploitation of natural environment uh, whereas if we look at the islamic economic framework it uh, asks human beings to be guardians of the natural environment for future generations if you look at uh, the current scenario there is excessive consumption which is led by the fiat based uh, money system uh, there is uh, credit expansion uh, even in countries where the per capita income is very high still we see that there is high household debt the household debt per capita is also very high in countries where uh, there is high per capita income so this is the result of interest based uh, fractional reserve uh, system in which uh, there is fiat money the fiat money is replacing the natural resources which are finite which have intrinsic value and we are uh, not uh, able to mobilize enough resources uh, for uh, development in this uh, interest based uh, uh, fractional reserve system there is free riding on natural resources because because these are not allocated and uh, utilized uh, uh, through the market forces they are beyond market uh, uh, resources and there is a over exploitation of common property resources as well what is needed is preservation conservation and restraint and all of this requires environmental ethics but uh, sadly the new classical economics is not able to integrate ethics into the uh, economic behavior and also in policy making natural resources and elements of ecology have a different life span than the private owners so some natural resources would have lives uh, uh, spread over centuries but human being only has uh, 60 to 80 years of life span so what happens in self centric paradigm is that there is tendency to overuse long lived natural resources in one's lifetime alone so what we are doing is we are borrowing from the future generations rather than giving them something the mainstream neoclassical consumer theory overemphasizes the role of consumer sovereignty so consumer is sovereign consumer can ask for anything and the producers would be uh, allocating resources to produce those uh, golf courses and resorts no matter whether there is uh, urgent need for food and health somewhere else so private property rights in an individualistic self interested paradigm grants limited uh, limitless ownership without taking into account the responsibilities towards society and humanity so all of this has resulted in ethical neutrality between contrasting ends uh, and there is a agency conflict between current and future generations in a godless world uh, because if we think that there is no accountability mechanism then present generation does not feel accountable to future generations so this creates a wedge between market and social cost of environmental goods and resources because social costs are not incorporated in the price mechanism that is why these costs are ignored and we overuse natural resources there is over exploitation of common property resources there there is free riding on public goods and all of this creates intergenerational inequity in resource distribution if you look at islamic worldview and professor rafiqul islam has uh, has uh, elaborated on it so i would not go too much into detail so islamic worldview extends the responsibility of humans to society uh, and future generations and other living species islamic worldview regards humans as trustees uh, it asks for afterlife accountability which deeply influences preferences behavior and choices it equips the believers with spiritual rationality to act in ethical ways for the eternal bliss so islamic uh, economics incorporates ethical values it is not devoid of values the ethical values in islamic economics are also more comprehensive as we uh, see islamic economics also brings a long term perspective to the decision uh, making by individuals uh, and uh, it uh, gives them more goals rather than just pursuit of self interest uh, so islamic ethics inculcates piousness kindness cooperation and all of these traits are really important to foster um, ethical behavior islam guides explicitly in some cases to avoid extravagance wasting and lavishness as we have also heard from other speakers uh, through the quranic verses and hadith islam also provides such meaningful conditioning 
which can create right balance between human aspirations which are having a limited bonds and the physical limits that we have in this uh, world now uh, if we look at the externalities they are these are the social costs which are not incorporated in the price mechanism and that is why the environmental resources are not uh, really valued as much as they should be and they are overused and uh, we do not care too much about it because we are living in the current generation but the future generations are going to suffer from it uh, so we need environmental ethics to make ourselves more responsible not only to the current generation but also to the uh, future generations and for this islamic worldview has afterlife accountability which can uh, mitigate the agency uh, conflict if we just uh, browse across uh, quranic verses and hadith on uh, environmental sustainability we come across uh, hadith which incorporates social costs in private actions uh, uh, islam says that uh, a Muslim has to uh, care about what uh, he or she is liking about the other person, just like he would care about himself. Uh, and uh, Islam uh, completely uh, uh, disallows wasting resources for uh, for uh, other than the purpose of need. And if someone does that, if someone cuts trees without justification, uh, there is a punishment for that. And we also come across hadith which uh, promise private rewards to socially. Uh, desirable actions uh, like we have heard from professor Rafiq islam that uh, uh, there is a strong encouragement for planting trees and it is regarded as a highly virtuous uh, act uh, if you look at uh, other hadith uh, they emphasize on using resources utilizing resources and not keeping resources idle in fact islamic jurisprudence says that if uh, uh, if a resource is in the ownership of someone and who is not uh, uh, making it uh, productive uh, and make and not making it uh, Use then uh, it should be uh, given to others so that they can utilize it. If we look at uh, uh, encouragement for uh, uh, greening the economy, greening the society, we come across a lot of uh, hadith which have also been mentioned by uh, other speakers. I would uh, skip uh, them. Uh, and we also see a strong encouragement to act in good ways, no matter whether they have a material impact or not, uh, because. Uh, uh, for us it is very important for our own salvage it is very important if we would act in good ways it would benefit us in afterlife so uh, so then we do not have to worry about whether our small acts are going to uh, make a difference or not uh, not only the good acts uh, would make a difference but also the bad acts or the evil acts uh, of hurting the economy would also uh, make a difference and this would be uh, uh, we would be responsible for these uh, acts removing harmful uh, things from the road is an act of charity. So, uh, Professor Rafiqul Islam has also mentioned about cleanliness, and, uh, and cleanliness is not just with regards to uh, making yourself clean, keeping yourself clean, but also uh, 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 keeping the environment clean and keeping the surroundings clean as well. And there is abs uh, insurance of absolute justice, which reduces the agency conflict. So Islam says that whatever uh, act that we would perform in this world, uh, we would be accountable for it. So this uh, reduces the agency conflict that we see in, in, in the new classical paradigm uh, in which uh, there is a godless worldview and uh, people are not uh, responsible beyond law. So uh, if we have this uh, worldview which uh, makes human beings responsible and uh, puts uh, and put uh, the resources into their hands uh, as trust, then uh, as trustees, we are uh, basically going to be more responsible as compared to feeling ourselves like uh, a sovereign consumer. There is uh, a lot of literature in Hadith and uh, in Quran which uh, talks about protection of biodiversity, animal rights. So uh, uh, there are lots of Hadith which talk about uh, animal rights. And uh, there are also Hadith which uh, talk about conservation of resources and uh, there is emphasis on uh, absolute conservation of resources, no matter whether they are abundant currently. So uh, one implication is that maybe in the current generation, we might feel like we would not run out of uh, some of the natural resources, but if we take the future generations into account, we would not find that the resources are as much abundant as they are for us. So what is important is that we need to conserve the resources, uh, which is really uh, important. Uh, lastly, I would uh, talk about uh, uh, some uh, principles which uh, uh, protect uh, special regions like uh, forests, like uh, uh, regions where uh, animals are there so uh, Islamic principles say that uh, these regions where uh, there are uh, let's say species uh, uh, which need to be protected there is uh, 
there is a region where uh, animals are there so these regions cannot be commercialized they cannot be overused so uh, there is regulation for uh, uh, common property resources and public goods as well in islam which is not the case in market economy where only the private property rights within the market economic transactions are uh, are uh, given more importance so there is emphasis on conservation of natural resources and uh, there is absolute guidance on not wasting because uh, it's not just uh, uh, oneself which uh, uh, which need to uh, think about uh, himself but the future generations also need to be uh, taken into account uh, when we are utilizing the resources so the resources might be abundant to us but not to all the uh, people who are going to come in the future so if we have this habit of not uh, uh, over utilizing resources definitely we would not be uh, leaving uh, uh, very little for the future generations so uh, there is also uh, a hadith on informing about value of natural resources one hadith says that uh, uh, what if you do not have water and there are lots of quranic verses which emphasize on environmental resources on uh, on uh, things in the ecology and all of these things are regarded as uh, blessings of allah so the idea is that uh, all of these things are taken for granted by human beings but they are not and science has shown that we live in a in this world uh, in a very fine tuned uh, uh, system so which means that all of these resources are really important islamic principles emphasize on fitra they emphasize on uh, preserving nature and uh, hurting the economy hurting the ecology is definitely against it my last point and last slide is about uh, this one verse from quran which says that uh, we have to uh, keep into this thing in mind that uh, the world and the resources that we are enjoying in this world may seem to be uh, uh, having no consciousness but they would have consciousness on the day of judgment when the earth is shaking with a violent shaking and the earth goes out her burdens and man says what has befallen her on that day earth shall tell her story so we need to take into account uh, this uh, guideline that we have to be responsible and uh, all of these environmental ethics and teachings can govern economic behavior uh, uh, keeping into account ethics thank you uh, for the khalid and the speakers for listening thank you very much our brother uh, dr salman ahmed who has joined from all through pakistan and he uh, of course uh, presented a very insightful presentation on islam and uh, environmental sustainability and he has also mentioned the issue of sustainable development which uh, was defined in 1987 uh, bratland commission report where it is mentioned to meet the needs of present generation without affecting the ability of future generation and that is also mentioned uh, in, in several uh, ayat and also the uh, sayings of, of our prophet peace be upon him and that our brother salman ahmed uh, mentioned properly and that is why islam encourages the conservation of the environment because it is the only resource of life therefore people have to protect the environment environmental resources come in different forms such as water plants animals birds places air and sea among others utilizing these resources is the right of all creatures the right to benefit from the environment is linked to being accountable to it as people are the only rational creatures on earth the islamic thoughts considers the people to be responsible for protecting the environment our prophet peace be upon him said in one hadith uh, the benefit of thing is in turn for the liability attached to it so that is why allah forbids destroying the environment and orders to people to utilize it is the best way possible so therefore we we, we are de definitely responsible for the protection and preservation of the environment that we are living today so respect the audience uh, at this point of time i would like to request our uh, guest of honors who has joined from malaysia uh, professor dr naushad amin he is from uh, institute of sustainable energy university tenang national that is national energy university malaysia so i'd like to request professor dr naushad amin please assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh may allah's peace and blessings be upon you all today thank you brother khalid yahya for having me here as one of the listeners i should say uh, alhamdulillah i'm i was listening i was a little bit late uh, due to some uh, other engagement um, i joined late i missed a lot but hopefully i will uh, look back into the recordings so let me start my words in the name of uh, our creator allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bismillahir rahmanir rahim um uh, let me start and uh, let me divide into two ways i uh, just um, read out some of my uh, thoughts of some of my understanding about um, sustainability our uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's uh, teachings 
as well as Quranic teachings. And uh, then I'll show um, one of the things that uh, we are engaging uh, just to give a little bit of assistance to the mankind in terms of conservation. Um, the Holy Quran offers a completely integrated view of, to the, of the universe where the human soul and the environment, mind and matter are part of one living, uh, the conscious whole. Therefore, it urges man to live a balanced, moderate and eco-friendly life without causing any harm to nature. However, about our abuse, misuse or lavishness, or extravaganza, Allah SWT warns us through for, uh, many ayahs in, in, in Al-Quran, just uh, let me pick up a few more, although uh, Brother Salman and other brothers also mentioned uh, many times, and it was a very good reminder for all of us. Uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah um, uh, 60, Allah says that, and do not commit abuse on the earth, uh, spreading corruption. This is an eye-opening verse uh, to all of us, I believe. Also in Surah Qasas, uh, Ayah uh, 77, Allah says, and do not desire corruption in the land. Indeed, God does not like corruptions. This is, this is another verse. And in Surah An uh, Anam, uh, verse 141, as well as in uh, Surah, uh, Surah Al-Araf, uh, Ayah um, 31, Allah says, uh, waste not by extravagance. Verily, he likes not uh, move sirun. Mufsirun means those who waste by extravagance or lavishness. So these ayahs urge us to follow a middle course in our spending, and neither being a miser nor a spendthrift or abuser, nor to be like those who spend in the disobedience of Allah SWT and his messenger. All of these verses ultimately mean that we are Allah's entrusted representative in this one livable world or earth as we have the responsibility over everything with Allah's guidance through his messenger's teachings of divine knowledge. And I think this um, um, hadith has been mentioned by many of our brothers today. Uh, but again, I just, just like to um, just remind all of you that uh, um, it was narrated by Ibn Maza. One day Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed by Saad ibn Abi Waqas while he was performing Udu or ablution. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked Saad, what is this wastage? Uh, Sadr Radil uh, replied, is there wastage in Rudu also? Professor Hassan said, uh, yes, even if you are at a flowing river. So this is very meaningful. This is very thoughtful for us. We, ha we are living in a world of, uh, of um, materialistic world. Um, uh, Brother Salman mentioned that this is godless economy. Yes, yeah, so many things are going on around and we, ha we, are, we are part of it. We even though we are uh, said that there are 2 billion Muslims um, out of 7.5 billion Muslims. Still, we are the part of this, um, I should say, this uh, godless uh, economy. And um, pretty much um, we are depending on um, like um, consumptions, consumption-based society. So we are surrounded by so many of these kind of things. We are sometimes um, forgetting our, our Iman, uh, I should not say that way, but we, we are forgetting Allah's teachings. Even though we, we recite, we try to pray five times or more, but we are forgetting many things. Many of uh, the Allah's entrusted uh, responsibilities to us, to, uh, to us as a mankind. And we, the Muslims, so-called Muslims who have Iman, to the least, have the more, utmost responsibility to perform in our own life, as well as to uh, give da'wah through our acts, as well as words. Anyway, um, this, um, the, 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 the last, uh, this um, the hadith that I mentioned, it demands our water footprint as we talk today, but over, it was, um, it was a reminder since Prophet Salah Islam's era that uh, do not waste the water. This is just one of the examples that I'm saying. Now, many of the world leaders, they are showing their footprints. For example, carbon footprints, whenever they're traveling, they're they are mentioning that how much carbon dioxide uh, I mean, due to this travel was uh, consumed, all those things. So this water footprint issue, this kind of idea has been there uh, since Prophet Islam's era. Uh, but we, uh, unfortunately, the Muslims could not utilize this. Okay, let me just remind a few um, few topics today that uh, has popped up in my mind um, as a human being or um, the role, role as, I mean, we are the representative of, of, um, of the mankind. So uh, it is our duty, in fact, to, um, to show our responsibility, not only to this uh, world, but also all the living, or living organisms or living creatures of the world. 
Let me start with uh, a few points. For example, the number one is, I want to mention that the earth is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have seen so many uh, planets, so many um, things are all around, but uh, nothing is livable except for this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better why we are here. And that's why the art is a bit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, the art is also the test, um, test, the test of humans, of humans' abilities to carry out the, their responsibilities to develop and sustain it until the day of judgment. The art was created beautifully and contains everything that is needed to accommodate every human's needs, not even human, but every creature's need, needs for a perfect life that worships Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number three, uh, sustaining the environment. Um, is a branch of Iman, of course, um, for reducing the risks and harms from places and public facilities, including roads, trains, flights, etc. Um, water resource, waste management, sewage systems, which is related to the climate change factors. As you know now, people are being more concerned. People know the car uh, carbon footprint of one uh, individual person, but there has um, never been seen any kind of um, equity, okay, I should say. Uh, some countries are more are enjoying more resources. Um, few countries, like you know, two percent of the countries are enjoying ninety-eight percent of the resources of whole world. Uh, number four, to encounter environmental degradation, uh, let's follow environmental sustainability practices that are in line with Prophet Islam's teachings. Okay. That is what uh, we must uh, remind ourselves, and also we have to be careful about. Um, just starting a very small matter, for example, disposing the garbage or industrial waste according to proper, proper procedures. This is also the teaching of Prophet Islam. And we have to reduce by that way the risks of accidents that can harm the society and to pay for the service utilized. And then I should stress on modesty or moderate way of life, which is the part of every Muslim's, I should say every Muslim's life, um, we have to follow the moderate or modest way. Um, which stems from the realization that Allah never misses any of his creation's actions. Uh, we should therefore move away from the lavish uh, or extravaganza way, uh, which is take, make, dispose. Uh, these habits is really uh, killing us and um, which also represents the so-called linear economy. And we have to move out from this and we have to practice three R, which represents reduce, reuse and recycle approach. That is the circular economy for sustainability. It's a gesture um, to protect Allah's entrustment on us. And then um, I should say that um, with the ability to think and act upon divine guidance through Al Quran and Sunnah, we, especially uh, we, the mankind, especially we, the Muslim, should adopt a lifestyle that is sustainable for the environment being Allah's ashraf al-maklukat or best creature or entrusted Allah by taking proper care of this one earth till the day we'll be accountable for our personal footprint on earth. Um, I just want to sh show that uh, I mentioned that before that um, the earth, people say that uh, two third is covered by the water, but only one percent of the water is drinkable. And if I take into account that water and some countries in some countries are suffering from water shortage. Some countries uh, pay more than oil for a similar amount of uh, water or uh, to purify the water, to make it drinkable. Uh, we, in our uh, place, in my uh, university, in my place also, we try to do uh, some research on alternative energy as, uh, I mean, Paul, I'm just going to show two things. This is a solar panel that we try to create and try to uh, give uh, people um, some sort of um, like um, knowledge, um, divine knowledge, part of divine knowledge to uh, to be self-sufficient in energy, to uh, not to be wasteful. And one other thing is just a bottle. I think I'm not sure whether you can see this bottle is to clean. Um, it was uh, one of our inventions that we uh, tried to make it during the, the flood of Malaysian flood, I think almost five or six years ago. So um, this kind of this kind of uh, innovation, for example, we can put um, any, 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 any dirty water, this part, and then we put, put on the, turn on the switch, then the water, uh, clean water will be in the, um, this tank and up to 1000 liter of water can be, can be purified by this simple um, like innovation that uh, we, we try to um, share with our suffered, uh, suffered, the suffered people. So I think the um, Muslim Ummah should come out with more innovations uh, should nurture more um, uh, knowledge from um, Quran and uh, Prophet Islam's teaching, 
and try to show that uh, we should we should uh, lead in terms of um, science and um, and uh, technology so that the sustainability issue that has been shown to us since long ago will be practiced in more uh, practical way so that people will, will believe in the teachings um, uh, more accurately and there's the, the way the sustainability professor Sam showed us will be um, will be um, I should say will be achieved uh, in no time. So may Allah forgive us, um, forgive myself um, for the limitations uh, in sharing my um, little knowledge. Hopefully uh, the, the, um, the Muslim all around uh, will try to learn uh, everything from Quran and Prophet uh, Sirah and Hadith, all these things so that we can show the whole world that uh, the, the knowledge is there, but it's us, uh, to perform how to achieve environmental sustainability through the Quranic knowledge and through the demonstration of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Thank you once again. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Khalid, Brother Khalid, uh, for giving me some time to share my uh, very little knowledge about these issues. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. Noshad. I mean, for his very beautiful incitement in a very precise and, of course, in a uh, shorter time. And uh, respect the audience, we're at the uh, end part of our webinar. At this point of time, we would like to request our another uh, guest of honor, Professor Dr. Muhammad Zuhul Amin. He has a civil, uh, various uh, affiliation. Uh, he was the professor and chairman uh, of Al Hadith and Islamic Studies Department at Islamic University, Kustia, Bangladesh. Uh, in last a number of years, he has been engaged in various Dawa activities throughout the world. At this point of time, he is uh, acting as the president of World. Muslim Heritage Research Center, USA. So I would like to request Professor Dr. Ruhul Amin to deliver his speech. And after Dr. Ruhul Amin, we will go to our Honorable Chair for her concluding remarks. Please unmute Dr. Ruhul Amin. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala wa ba'd. Honorable Chairperson of today's international webinar titled The Principles of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Environmental Protection, uh, Dr. Aisha Muniza, Hafizahullah, my beloved moderator and host, Advocate Khalid Ihya, distinguished or world-renowned speakers from different parts of the globe, their audience of today's virtual webinar organized by Center for Sustainable Development of Muslim Worlds. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. It's my pleasure to be part of this August seminar uh, about principles of environmental protection given by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We, we learn a lot from our distinguished uh, speakers. Uh, we know that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was a uh, mercy to enter universe. Rahmatan lil alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen. So he was a uh, mercy to enter in universe. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Lord of universe, Rabbul Alameen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the creator and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided his, uh, his prophet Muhammad how to take care of universe. So uh, I would like to say the principles uh, guided by our beloved prophet Sallallahu to take care of environment. Number one, it is ownership of all things belongs to Almighty Allah, the creator and sustainer. So first, this, uh, it should be uh, recognized that all, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created uh, this environment, uh, every creation to check and balance. And he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided through his rebuild book and his messenger. And number two, humans are Khalifa. And they are representatives of, on this earth. And they should follow the guidance given by creator and his messenger. And number three, 
humans are permitted to utilize the environment without wasting and causing harm. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything for the benefit of his creatures. And uh, so we, we should uh, do according to these uh, rules that uh, it should not be wasting and it should not be causing harm for others, no matter human being or any creature or any animal. And number four, humans are accountable for their deed. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ala kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ulun an ra'iyatihi. You all are accountable and you all will be asked at the day of judgment about your responsibility. So what we are doing, if we are harming any, 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 anybody or any animal or trees or, or, uh, or causing for pollution of weather or any, any kind of environmental harm, then we'll be accountable to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also Islamic approach to the environment is that uh, Islam always describes the environment and teaches us that it has been created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we as a human being, we, we, we have been prescribed how humanity should use the environment. Also, it is uh, practically shown by our beloved Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who is a role model for entire uh, humanity, uh, Uswatun Hassana. And also Islam guided, uh, guided us, uh, given us guidance from the principles of environmental protection. And Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not theoretically only uh, has shown this thing practically, he did practice and has shown us how to implement these uh, protection, these principles in our practical life. Uh, let us uh, uh, see the observation of uh, and German, uh, uh, a Netherlands-based anthropologist, his, uh, uh, her name is um, <clears throat> F.B. Chattel. He said that, she said that one could say he, Prophet Muhammad was an environmentalist before his time, a pioneer in the domain of conservation, sustainable development and resource management, and one who constantly sought to maintain a harmonious balance between man and nature. And uh, this is very true. Uh, you, uh, this is very true witness uh, an observation uh, of uh, a an, an Netherlands-based anthropologist. Okay, uh, so let us see what Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, guided us about this thing. We know that uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has a lot of teaching we learn uh, different speakers, they already have uh, discussed on this topic. And uh, just, I would like to mention a few of these things. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said in hadith, Abu, Khud, Abu Sa'id Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, uh, narrated by, uh, by him, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, inna dunya huwatun khadira, wa inna allaha mustakhlifukum fiha, fal yanzur kayfa ta'amalun. The world is sweet and green. And uh, surely Allah is going to install you as a Khalifa in it in order to see how you act. This hadith is compiled by Imam Muslim. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us as a caretaker, as a Khalifa. So if we are taking care of this environment, all creation, then as if we are following the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why uh, we, we, we can, we can uh, discuss on few points uh, uh, about the prophet's prophetic teaching uh, to uh, protect the environment. Number one, conserve our resources as much as possible. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was, he, he was uh, doing wudu with one. وَكَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَتَوَدَّ بِالْمَدِّ وَيَغْتَسِلُ بِالسَّاعِ إِلَى خَمْسَةِ أَمْدَاتِ and he was, uh, he was using, uh, utilizing uh, properly. He was doing Odu, very short uh, uh, amount of water. So he was not wasting uh, water. So even if you, uh, if you take 
what do in a flowing river don't waste the water this is the guidance of our beloved rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay number two practice sustainable consumption whenever possible the uh, we, we 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 hear from our guest of honor the reduce reuse and recycle these three very important thing uh, to protect environment so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said ma yasna ahadukum fi baytihi yakhsifu an'ala wa yarqa athawba wa yakhid when aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha was asked about the how rasul sallam is doing in his uh, house uh, she said that he did what one of you uh, used to do in his house he mended uh, sandals and patches garments and sewed this is this is narrated by um uh, uh, compiled by al adab al mufrad imam bukhari and another hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, he said that the to about the plantation uh, pla to plant a tree as a mean of good deeds rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said ma min muslimin yaghrisu gharsan aw yazra'u zar'an fa ya'kulu minhu tayran aw insan aw bahimatun illa kana lahu bihi sadaqa subhanallah how beautifully rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, encourages us to keep uh, the environment safe if a muslim plants a tree or sows a seed and then a bird or a person of any animal uh, or a person or animal eats from it it will be the charity it will be sadaqa subhanallah this hadith is hadith of bukhari and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said even if the uh, if the qiyama were uh, established upon one of you while he has in his hand a sapling uh, let him plant it this hadith is narrated by anas ibn malik he said that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in qamat ala ahadikum al qiyama wa fi yadihi fasilatun fal aghrisa subhanallah so how rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given emphasis on the uh, protection of environment uh, and and to sustain this thing and also uh, number four, care for the animals and the rest of allah's creation it is also sadaqa rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said fi kulli kabadin ratbatin ajrun there is a reward for serving any any uh, living being any 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 creation subhanallah this hadith is uh, in bukhari so protection of uh, protection of animals how rasulullah sallam uh, protected this thing he has given guidance and practice of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay showing mercy to birds and animals is charity feeding properly freedom good health and supplication for animals and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam prohibited killing animal for mere sports or as like uh, we are doing making animal fight each other for for sports and uh, stoning animals and birds and mistreatment and in in uh, imprisonment so this thing is prohibited in islam that's why rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said all creatures all uh, all uh, all creatures of allah uh, from from the family of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is the best uh, beloved uh, who is beloved to allah who loves his creation subhanallah subhanallah this is the guidance of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, number 5 keep the environment clean and safe rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, he said that imatatul azani tariq to remove the harming thing from the street it is part of iman and also rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said bainama rajulun amshi bi tariqin wajada ghusl shawkin fa akhadhahu fa shakara allah lahu fa ghafarahu and uh, in this hadith rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said while a man was walking along a path and he found a a uh, thor, uh, thorny branch of a tree on the way and he removed it and allah thanked him for that and forgave him subhanallah so one uh, one uh, one lady she just she uh, gave the water to a thirsty dog and allah has forgiven her so this is the beauty of uh, islam and beauty of the prophetic guidance about uh, protect, uh, protecting environment and to sustain it Uh, my dear audience uh, our 
learned this, uh, speakers, they only discuss about uh, so many things. Alhamdulillah, we learn and we are so thankful to everybody and especially uh, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's guidance about the uh, principles, uh, uh, principles of uh, uh, in, uh, to environmental protection. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I, I, lastly, I would like to remind myself and everybody uh, that he was not only prophet of uh, Muslim, he was a uh, beneficial for entire human being and he has shown the guidance in universal teachings and he guided us uh, by saying, you all are accountable and you all will be res uh, uh, asked about your responsibility, accountability. So he said that you have to, uh, when you spend, you have to uh, balance spending and uh, he prohibited to wa wa wasting things, prohibited uh, of breeding, pro prohibition of lying, prohibition of dishonesty, prohibition of uh, uh, hiding uh, any defect in products and service. This responsible business also sustainable consumption. So uh, uh, lastly, I would like to thank uh, the organizer, especially uh, the host Advocate Khaled here for giving me a chance uh, uh, to learn something from these uh, learned uh, speakers. And I would like to thank you everybody uh, and uh, hope that we will be uh, acting uh, to save, protect, and protect the environment and to make it sustainable for human beings and all creatures. Thank you very much. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Muhammad Rubul Amin, for his very beautiful deliberation in a proper manner. Uh, respected audience, we're at the end part uh, of our uh, session today. At this point of time, I'd like to request our Honorable Chair, Dr. Aishat Muniza, to deliver uh, her final remarks. She is an Associate Professor at the International Center for Education in Islamic Finance, INCEIF Malaysia. Uh, she is the first female Deputy Minister of the Ministry of Islamic Affairs and was the Deputy Minister of the Ministry of Finance and Treasury, the Republic of Maldives. Her contribution to Islamic finance includes a structuring of the corporate shukuks, sovereign private shukuk of the country, including the Islamic Treasury instruments, designing the first Islamic microfinance scheme, and establishing and heading the Maldives Host Corporation. Dr. Munija has also published research papers in different academic journals and has published six books already. She is an invited speaker to different events hold in on Islamic finance around the world. Dr. Munishi has also won numerous national and international awards and recognitions for her unabated effort in creating a full-fledged Islamic finance industry in Maldives and throughout the world. At this point of time, I'd like to request Dr. Ashad Muniza to deliver her final remarks. Thank you very much. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf bil anbiya wal mursaleen wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'in. Ladies and gentlemen, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, I'd like to thank the organizer for having organized such an important event where we, can, we are able to hear the different perspectives on the topic from distinguished speakers. And at the same time, I'd like to thank all the speakers, especially the honorable guest speakers and our discussants for being here with us today to share your perspective on the topic. So since everything has been covered in this session, um, I think my job is very easy. Uh, what I would like to do today uh, is to give you an, uh, um, a summary of what has been already mentioned up, uh, mentioned by our respectable speakers. So I'll start with the first speaker, um, Brother Khalid Saifullah. He has mentioned that uh, definitely environment is something which is considered in Islam. And there are three things we have to emphasize when we talk about environment uh, protection, because from Islamic worldview point, uh, point of view, it is important to know that um, men are sent to this world as khalifas. Therefore, the stewardship job needs to be fulfilled by humans. And at the same time, we have the duty to conserve resources 
and we have to maintain a div divine balance in everything we do in this world, whether it is environment or any other aspect of our lives. Our second speaker, Dr. Rafiqul Islam, has said that um, Prophet Wasallam should be taken as the example, not only for environmental things, but to all aspects in our lives. And therefore, uh, we need to adopt his teachings in everything we do in life. And he also has emphasized that COVID has taught us some positive uh, aspects of life, including the, including the importance of protecting environment, because whatever happens to the environment is uh, affected to the human beings as well. So the more we take care of our environment, the more uh, impactful life we could have in this world. Next, the speaker was um, Dr. Irfan. Uh, Dr. Irfan um, has emphasized on the different types of uh, products or services that could be offered using um, environment and en environmental considerations. For instance, he has given the example of Green Super, which is an example taken from Islamic uh, commercial finance. And he has also given an example using Islamic social finance as well. Um, the example he provided uh, for Islamic social finance included a very innovative uh, work of based forest model, which could be replicated in other parts of the world. And through this model, definitely we could achieve ecolo uh, ecological balance in the world. And when we talk about innovative um, types of products or innovative types of uh, ways in which we could achieve environmental sustainability, Dr. Yusuf has given us a very innovative type of an example that could be adopted in any part of the world as well. From the presentation made by Dr. Yusuf, it's clear that using the Solidarity Campus example, we can achieve zero waste by going back to the previous or the classical times, uh, rather than um, following what we are adopting right now in the world, in conservation of resources. So what I believe is that from the example given by Dr. Yusuf, definitely we can adopt this model and we could achieve zero waste. And at the same time, we could uh, promote environmental sustainability principles, which are embedded in Islam. Next speaker is Dr. Salman. So in the Dr. Salman speech, the most important thing which he mentioned was about um, linking environmental crisis to developments of human beings. Now, due to COVID, we understand that the world uh, poverty clock has turned back to more than 30 years. And this shows that we need to do more work in terms of um, progressing in human development. And therefore, um, environmental protection plays an important role in this regard because without environmental protection, we can't achieve anything. First of all, we need to be um, having a good health to live in this world and to be in a good health, definitely environment uh, plays a vital role. And therefore excessive consumption, consumption of resources, over exploitation of resources are things that we should avoid and environment ethics is something we have to promote. So when we talk about environmental ethics, um, it's not something which is alien to Islam. As Dr. Salman has indicated, it's already part and parcel of Islam. It's a matter of uh, practicing it. And there are two important principles he also emphasized in this regard. One is um, in Islam, whenever there is um, any type of um, environmental protection encouragement as an incentive, there are social costs attached to it, which leads to not only um, giving a person the opportunity to save the world, but at the same time, he could get reward for doing a good action. So meaning that uh, giving private rewards for social actions is an incentive in Islam. And because of this, uh, definitely it encourages us to do more good deeds in this regard. Next uh, was our honorable guest speaker, Professor Naushad. 
So in his speech, definitely we understood that as vice chairs of this earth, we have a responsibility on our shoulder and we need to ensure that our responsibility is fulfilled in the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed. So in this regard, we need to definitely conserve our resources and we need to also move towards um, innovation. So when it comes to conservation of resources, he has spe uh, specifically mentioned that the linear economy model is not something which is effective. Therefore, what we need to promote is the circular economy model. So again, when we talk about circular economy model, that means that there will be less wastage of resources and definitely we could move towards attaining um, environmental sustainability from an Islamic perspective by doing that. And uh, interestingly, he has showed um, two of his innovations which are very important. And he has emphasized that when it comes to sustainability of environment, we need to follow Prophet Sallallahu teaching. And it's not only about following it uh, by reading it or understanding it, but implementation is also very important. So in this regard, he has emphasized on um, acting to the Prophet Sallallahu uh, traditions by implementing it through science and technology. And this is something we need to emphasize in the Muslim world. And I, I hope that in the near future, there will be more action towards this and we will achieve more objectives uh, in this. Our final speaker, uh, Professor Dr. Rufal Amin, has emphasized on um, our responsibility as humans um, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as everything belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we are just uh, his trustees to act in the way he has prescribed us to act. And from his presentation, um, the most important thing which I have understood is that um, as humans, we are individually accountable as well as collectively accountable. And therefore, as individuals, we're supposed to promote uh, environmental sustainability. For example, we could uh, start by planting trees or we can even remove uh, objects which are harmful to others um, in public places. And likewise, uh, when it comes to collective responsibility, we also need to fulfill our role as a trustee by ensuring that collectively we work towards environmental sustainability. So in this regard, I think we need to talk about the role of um, halal industry as well. So when it comes to halal industry, whether we call it Islamic banking or takaful or um, fashion and designing or whatever it is, when it comes to practicing uh, in halal industry, it is important for us to adopt uh, environmental sustainability principle as part and parcel of it. Therefore, I believe that um, before concluding this speech, I think I, I'd like to emphasize on the important things that we could do, which would be practical um, in this 21st century with the technological progress we have achieved to do. So number one is I want to emphasize that conservation of resources for sustainable uh, economic development is very important. And in order to, to do that, um, doing, I mean, finding innovative financing solutions to achieve environmental sustainability is also uh, important. So when we talk about practicing sustainable consumption practices and reducing um, wastage, wastage of resources, uh, what I need to emphasize here is that I think we need to find innovative ways to implement circular economy. So this is something which is um, easy to say than being done. Therefore, um, we need to find innovative solutions to ensure that this practice could be implemented in all parts of the world, irrespective of the level of the development of the countries. And keeping the environmental clean is also something important. Likewise, carbon finance projects need to be prioritized. And at the same time, we need to develop an incentive uh, system to ensure that um, environmental sustainability becomes a priority um, at a practical level. So with this, um, brief recommendations. Um, I think uh, it's sufficient for us to find a way forward in this regard. What is important is that to ensure that whatever we say we practice, because without practice, whatever we know is again a wastage. And therefore, I believe that 
the way forward um, and the importance of having this session is for us to uh, remind ourselves of the importance of practicing what we know so that at least um, we can conserve our resources for the future generations. And definitely um, protection of environment is something we, in which we will be rewarded not only in uh, this world, but in hereafter as well. So with this, I conclude my remarks. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Aishat Muniza, for her uh, concluding remarks. Uh, definitely, uh, she summarized all the main important points that our other speakers uh, mentioned today. And of course, he, she presented uh, her very short recommendation and, and some other uh, important briefs in a very short way. Hopefully from our discussion, the researchers, the policymakers, and of course, the future generation, they will be benefited. And hopefully we will try to implement the main principles lesson we got today in our, in our life in, in, in future way. So with these words, uh, I, I would like to conclude this session by giving huge thanks to our all uh, in, uh, honorable speakers and of course our audience who has viewed us last uh, two hours uh, with these things i would like to conclude this session thank you very much wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh peace be upon all of you thank you very much thank you. assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum thank you brother salman uh, um brother Khalid. Thank you. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much.